Let's just prepare ourselves for meditation this morning. And before we begin, I would just like to say thanks to Elaine, who wrote this beautiful abundance meditation and asked me to read it because her throat is a little scratchy. But we hope that she will be just fine to give us her message today. So let's just breathe. And let's just get comfortable in our chairs. If you want to put your hand on your heart, you may. Or just leave them in your lap. We just say, thank you, Spirit. Thank you. It is said that anyone can count the seeds of an apple. But only God can count the apples in a seed. The potential, the infinite possibilities of the universe are beyond our human understanding. But we can choose to experience the infinite, to commune with source. So let's just continue to breathe as we visualize the grains of white sparkling sand on a pristine beach that stretches for miles. Could we possibly count each grain? We know that each grain is brought to this place by divine order to be admired and appreciated as it joins the billions of other grains of sand to create the perfect place of beauty and peace. Like these grains of sand, you too are your perfect, in your perfect space to create beauty, peace, and joy. This is the sacred space of the most holy, the place of pure potential, where all is possible and limitless. You have only to choose to be there, to dwell there. And now we simply release those thoughts of fears and concerns and choose to rest in the peace that surpasses all understanding. We are in the presence of and enveloped by the divine. We are one with spirit. And like the waves gently lapping at the shore, we simply are. No agenda, no cares. Just as a wave cannot be separated from the ocean, we cannot be separate from our Creator. And we rest in this eternal knowledge in the silence. As we bring ourselves back, we say, thank you, Spirit, for the experience of oneness knowing that we are one with infinite potential and possibility. All is well, and so it is. Amen.
I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear I dreamed of rain and the rains came And peace spread over the land I dreamed of summer and the winds changed And the green was easy and the rivers ran clear I dreamed of summer and the winds changed And peace spread over the land And the flowers bloom in the desert And the air is fresh and clear I dreamed of summer and the winds changed And peace spread over the land I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose And the way was easy and the path was clear I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose And peace spread over the land And the guardian stars are shining And the night is bright and I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose And peace spread over the land I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang And the sound was easy and the song was clear I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang and peace spread over the land And the ancient pain is forgotten And the Father's love is clear I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang And peace spread over the land I dreamed of rain and the rains came Soft and easy Sweet and clear I dreamed of rain And the rains came And peace spread over the land And peace spread over the land opening prayer so <laughs> so today um, of course the official title is just opening to abundance but those of you who know me knew I couldn't leave that alone I had to add yippee or no thanks so what we want to talk about is abundance is it's a it's a perceived state of being because it's different for everybody so a lot of you are probably familiar with Edwin Gain. She's one of Unity's prosperity gurus. And this is how she defines prosperity. The first thing she says is we need a vitally alive physical body to provide a comfortable, worldly home for the spiritual beings we are. Well, that makes, that makes sense. And I call that perfect health because that is the vision. And things happen because we have these human bodies and we move through them. But our vision is wellness. So the se second thing she says that's part of uh, prosperity or abundance are loving, lasting relationships that work. And these are the relationships that feed our soul. They're not the ones that make us crazy. Those are the ones we release to their higher good. So the third thing she says is that we should have meaningful activity or work that we love. And some of us are past the career stages. I'm still thinking about what's next. But we, we find meaningful activity, whether it's volunteers or just fun things to do. 
So the fourth thing, fourth thing Edwin says that we should have, should vision, is financial freedom. And that's all the money that we could spend or give away. And wouldn't that be fun? Now I add to my definition of abundance, I add peace and joy and fun. Because if you don't have peace and joy and fun, the other stuff is like, well, so what? But each person's perception is different, and it's based on your experiences and what you've come to believe is true. So for some people, abundance means having clean water, or it might mean having freedom, that they're not oppressed, they're not held captive by who knows what. Or it might be that they have plenty of food, or it could be they got another palace, who knows. It might be they want an education, or it could be that their freedom from disease, that they have a complete recovery from whatever ailed them. And for some, it's a new Learjet. So Levine and I were laughing about this before the service. For us, it's a great haircut and great shoes. So, so it's our perceptions. What do we believe to be true, and what do we expect to happen? So let me ask you this. What's available? What do you believe is available? And who says? And who set those limits? So a few months ago, I talked about um, possibility. And I told you my favorite, favorite saying is, I dwell in possibility. And Emily Dickinson said this. So that was probably back in June. So then the next time I talked, I talked about the creator is my source I do not lack. So these are the things that are part of my abundance. So if we're talking about abundance, it seems kind of obvious that we're open to abundance, or are we? UPS delivery, UPS delivery. <laughs> well, who are you? I am the, I'm not that UPS guy. I'm. Mr. Unlimited Prosperity Source. Oh, okay. Well, what exactly is that? It's, well, you know, it's the Creator's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Ask and ye shall receive. Seems you've really mastered the visualization and manifestation work. So here's what you've requested. Wow, thanks. And I thought parking space was a great deal. So what did you bring me? What did you bring me? Huh. Okay, this is gift number one. <clears throat> wow, this is great. Gift number one, perfect health. Congratulations. Now, wait a minute. This is required for ongoing perfect health manifestation. Huh. Number one, gratitude. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Number two, a healthy diet. Fruit, vegetables, non-GMO food, limited sugar and fat, no processed food. No, wait a minute. No Doritos, Big Macs, fries, Twinkies, goo clusters. That's not going to work. No, nope, this is too hard. I need my Oreos and my Fritos. And I really like my fried bologna. So I don't think this, I don't know. Number three, serious exercise five days a week. Who's got time for that? Ugh. And stress management with prayer, meditation, and being in the moment. You know, this is just too hard. Don't you have like a magic pill or something? Okay, that's a not accepted on perfect health. Huh. Too hard, reason too hard, lack of commitment, error thoughts. Ew. Okay, well, maybe number two's better. Ooh, loving relationships. Yay. Congratulations. Now, now we're talking. <laughs> My soulmate. There's more directions here. Ew. Okay. Required for ongoing loving relationships manifestation. Gratitude, forgiveness, compassion, compromise, generosity, empathy, and joy. Now, wait a minute. I thought this relation stuff was about me. This, this, is, this doesn't sound like it's about me at all. I, I don't think this is going to work either. That's a not accepted on the loving relationships. Not ready for commitment. Error thoughts. Hmm. 
Okay, well, maybe this one. Maybe this will work. We'll see, we'll see. Gift number three, financial freedom and lavish prosperity. Ooh, ooh, shoes. I love shoes. Okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. There's more requirements. Number one, gratitude. Okay, we got that. We got that. Number two, trust in the divine. Got that. And number three, self-worth and self-love. Well, you know, we're all working on that. So, okay, well, maybe this is my heart's desire. Let's see what else it says. Yes, financial freedom, lavish abundance, da, da, da. Oh, and here's my perfect job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Vice president of cor corporate communications, big salary, lots of perks, you know, big corner office. Yippee! Oh, wait a minute. This company's downtown. I don't want to work downtown. I don't like traffic, and I don't like parking. No, this ain't going to work. Ooh, and you have to travel, you know, like TSA lines and crowded planes, crazy people. Nope, th this is not my dream job. And besides, you know, I might not be good enough for this job. And, you know, there's only so much good stuff to go around. So, and uh, so that's not accepted on financial freedom, reasons, self-doubt, and not willing to trust the creator to deliver the highest good. But it's downtown. Error thoughts. Ew. Well. Oh, well, um, i tell you what. Keep working on the visualization. Okay. And manifestation. And maybe a little more trust in the divine to provide what's, what, what's for your highest good. I'll see you again. Okay, so that's it. I just keep visioning and working on my co-creating. Yep, asking ye shall receive. Being open, accepting is your choice. Okay, Ooh, wait a minute, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with that, but is that your red Lamborghini out there? You know, you deliver in a red Lamborghini? I've always wanted a red Lamborghini. Well, actually, that was going to be yours. What? But you didn't accept the Creator's gift. Oh, no. Financial freedom and lavish abundance. Do you know what the insurance cost on that thing is anyway? Oh, man. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. UPS guy. So, <laughs> so you'll never think of the UPS the same way again, will you? So basically, being open to abundance is a little more complicated than we thought. Yeah, we ask and we receive, we knock and the doors open, and we seek and we find. But why is it so hard to receive? There's a few things. We might just not be ready. You know, things show up and the timing's just not right. Or at least we think it's not. And sometimes we just don't have the commitment. You know, I'm just not ready to give up those Fritos and, and Twinkies. You know, even though it would be for my higher good. Most often, it's fear. We're just afraid. We've got some bizarre error thought that we've been taught. So, and these are things, we don't come to earth believing these things. They're taught. So there's four main, and I call them untruths. We call them myths. I thought lie was a little strong. And we're, we're taught. We're taught that these things just are true. And we believe them as we get older. So myth number one, and we all know this one, it is better to give than to receive. Well, maybe. But here's the thing. We are trading the word receive for the word take in a lot of cases. And is it better to give than to take? Well, maybe, because we've given take a, a negative connotation. But here's a news flash. There can be no gift without a receiver. This is part of the law of circulation. There must be a gift. There must be a receiver. So and we know it feels really good to give. And we're taught it feels really good. But now science has measured. And we actually know that there's a portion in the brain that creates all these wonderful little chemicals. And it creates a state of euphoria when we give. And isn't that fun? But that's all wonderful. But if I give you a gift and you don't take it, 
then it, there is no gift. So are you saying no to the creator? Mm, we don't want to do that. So I had a huge aha when I was working on this talk. And one thing that occurred to me was when I was growing up, everything had a price or a string attached or a condition. Whether it was Santa and I had to be good or I had to go along with whatever um, the condition was. Maybe it was you have to go to church on Sunday morning or you can't da 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 da. Everything had a string attached. So, and that's pretty bad. And even compliments, I learned very quickly, oh no, compliments. Don't take a compliment. It's really not true. If someone said, oh, you're so pretty, then someone in my family immediately said, don't tell her that. She's not that pretty. Pretty is as pretty does. So what I heard was, ooh, not pretty on the inside or the outside. So have you all experienced that, that you were told? Whatever it is you're getting, there's a string attached. Kind of scary, isn't that? So that was huge for me. So truth number one, there must be a recipient for the gift to be given. And that leads us right to myth number two. I'm not, you're not, we're not enough. We're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're not talented enough. We're not tall enough to have our dreams come true. And this is bunk. This is absolute bunk. Who told you that? We are children of the highest, and we are created in that image. So of course we deserve. We are worthy. So truth number two, I am, you are, we are enough. We always have been, and we always will be. So we miss all these opportunities because of this fear and these error thoughts. So fear and self-doubt self block this flow because we're saying, no, no, can't do that. So myth number three, one of my favorites, there's only so much to go around. Well, uh, to that I say garbage. This is what Charles Fillmore says in his book, Prosperity. The spiritual sub substance from which comes all visible wealth is never depleted. It is not affected by the ignorant talk of hard times, though we, the people, are affected because our thoughts and words govern our demonstration. This unfailing resource is always ready to give. So we name these things. We call them bear markets or bull markets or depressions or recessions or booms and busts, and we, we try to name all these conditions that really have no effect on us unless we let them. So this is what the astrophysicists have now learned. <clears throat> Most of the universe is made up of dark energy, a mysterious force that drives the accelerating expansion of the universe. The next largest ingredient is dark matter, which only interacts with the rest of the universe through its gravity. Normal matter, including all the visible stars and planets and galaxies and dust and comets and whatever, makes up less than 5% of the total mass of the universe. So that means 95% of the known universe remains as pure potential. This is what Charles Fillmore called substance. So truth number three, the supply of substance is inexhaustible. We cannot run out of love. We cannot run out of miracles. We cannot run out of wealth. It just keeps creating as we call it forth. We have only to expect and accept it. So the last truth or myth, if I take too much, there won't be any left for you. Or if you take too much, there won't be any left for, for me. Well, duh, that's not true because poss you know, possibility and potential is limitless. Go back to number three. We've got 95% in all the universe left to call forth. 
So do you think when Warren Buffett or Bill Gates have a great day on the stock market and they make eight or 10 billion, does that come out of your account or my account? Mm -mm. It's all new. They have called it forth. And it's the same ridiculous stuff that, well, you have to have a small house because I have to have a big house. No, it doesn't work that way. We do not cut up abundance, the potential, like it's some kind of pie. Abundance is not this giant, infinite, or finite pie in the sky that there's limits. And boy, when you start cutting to it, it's like, well, I want a piece this big, so you need a piece this big. It's not like that. Substance is infinite. We have only to call it forth. And remember, the divine says, this is what we read in, in scripture, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly, not a paltry little bit, not a sad little existence, but have it abundantly. And this is what Catherine Ponder says. And she's, in, she's Unity's, um, I would call her our main abundance prosperity foundation. She says this, it is your creator's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, and it should be your good pleasure to receive it. So this coming week, you have assignments. The first is smile. It's contagious, and it's free. You can give away smiles all week. They are limited only by how many you're willing to give away. Number two, count your blessings, live in gratitude for all that flows to you. Number three, when those little error thoughts and those little tapes pop up that block your, your abundance, the flow of your dreams, thank them, stop them, and release it. Just let it go. It doesn't serve you. And the last one, dwell in possibility. Be open to the, to the abundance of the universe. Maybe it's you win a free dinner somewhere. Or who knows, someone might take you out to lunch. You just don't know how the universe is going to show up and bring you a gift. So when you're unlimited possibility supply guy, your new UPS person, when that delivery arrives, will you say, mm, no thanks, or yippee? I wrote this song as a reminder to myself to live in the moment. What would life be if we didn't have dreams and nothing to look forward to? Hold on to your vision. Make it your mission to make your own dreams come true. But don't spend all your time making big plans and forget about living today. It's nice to know where you're going, but don't miss the fun along the way. Don't let today pass you by while you're planning your future. Don't let the past make you cry Cause you're filled with regret And yet your memories can make you wiser And dreams can fill you with hope Just cling to what makes you stronger Then let all the rest go Like everyone the things that I've done come back to haunt me sometimes. A heart that I broke, harsh words that I spoke. Oh, why was I so blind? But I won't waste time feeling guilty for things that I can't change. I bring my lessons learned forward so I can live better today. Don't let today you by while you're planning your future don't let the past make you cry cause you're filled with regret and yet your memories can make you wiser and 
dreams can fill you with hope. Just cling to what makes you stronger. Then let all the rest go. Say hello to a stranger and look her straight in the eye. Raise your arms to the sunshine. Lift your face to the sky. Help someone to feel better. Do something nice for yourself. Say thanks for the gifts you're given, and remember to share the wealth. Share your wealth. Don't let today pass you by while you're planning your future. No. Don't let the past make you cry, 'cause you're filled with regret. And yet, your memories can make you wiser. Dreams can fill you with hope. Just cling to what makes you stronger. Then let all the rest go. Cling to what makes you stronger. Then let all the rest go.